Um, of course, Jesus knew what the answers were. He wasn't learning anything when he asked the question. But this was for them. It was for them to learn and for them to process. By the way, did you ever find out how many questions he asked? So the real answer is 307. Okay. Hey, may mga no may data dito eh. Okay. The interesting thing is, do you realize that there were only 187 questions asked of Jesus? So he asked more questions than people asked him. Now, can you imagine that? Here, the God of the universe is standing with you, walking with you, and you don't ask him any questions. He is the one asking questions. That is really amazing to me. Anyway, another interesting fact about questions. Do you realize that Jesus only answered three of the 187 questions? Many of the times when he was asked a question, you know what he did? He asked them a question in return. Okay? Amazing the things that you can learn from what Jesus did in his ministry. Now, what I'd like to do is go through a very simple process of how you could practice a coaching process to help a person discover the answer for themselves of what God wants them to do. Now, um, for those of you who know something about business, life coaching, and all of that stuff, this is actually taken from a book that uh, I can give you the information if you'd like to. Uh, he actually trains life coaches from a Christian point of view. It's a, a way to actually make a living and help people come to know Christ. It's, a, it's an amazing thing. The guy's name is Keith Webb. And uh, you can find him online. He does seminars mainly out of Singapore. Uh, really, really good stuff. But he shared this with us. And it's a process that you can use basically like a life coach would use. Now, some of you are wondering, yeah, but is it in the Bible? Okay, is, are there questions in the Bible? Yes, we just saw that there's 307 that Jesus asked. And that's all coaching is. It's asking questions. So can I show you this five-step approach in the Bible? No. But I can show you that Jesus did something very similar in the way that he asked people to process things and come to their own conclusions. So don't take this as a, like, uh, set in stone, you must do these five steps in order to be a good coach. But the first few times you do this, Sometimes it helps to have a pattern that will make you uh, use the discipline of asking questions and letting other people come to conclusions. Now, I'm going to do the demonstration later, and I'm going to explain to you what the five steps are. But before I say this, let me say the most difficult skill in coaching, do you know what it is? It's keeping your mouth shut. Especially, you ask them, so tell me about the problem that you're experiencing, you know? And so they start sharing, and immediately, ah, solution. I know what they should do. And you want to tell them right away. And they're going on talking and talking. You're going, just, just stop. I know the answer. I know the solution. So the hardest thing in coaching is to keep your mouth shut and just let them process. Now, I know that's very difficult. I'm a teacher, okay? I love to talk. You ask my wife. She's always competing for airtime. So, you know, it's not easy for us to just be quiet and listen and let the other person discover. But that is what coaching is about. So I just warn you, if you like to talk a lot, a lot you're going to be challenged in coaching, okay? So how do you do this? Well... What if you were having that appointment at Starbucks, you're getting together with one of your disciples, and uh, they share that they had some issues that they wanted to talk with you about, and so you sit down together with them. How are you going to start it? What are you going to do? Well, there is an acronym that Keith Webb uses that makes it really easy to remember. Guess what the acronym is? Coach. You're looking at your notes. You're not supposed to look at your notes. Bad boy. Okay. So the first one is connect. First, you want to just build rapport. 
So, I mean, you don't immediately go into really deep and heavy stuff with people as soon as you get together. You want to find out how they're doing, just kind of build rapport. So this step, you build rapport and trust. And if you have perhaps met together with them in a previous meeting where you had a chance to be able to go over things, you review what you talked about the last time and make sure that they actually did what they said they would do. Okay? So you hold them accountable for what they said that they were going to do. But if it's the first time, you can't do that. If you're just sitting down for coffee, so you just want to connect with them. And what could you do? And by the way, the main uh, part of each one of these steps is to ask questions. Okay? So what's the first question that you might ask? And by the way, these are samples. You don't have to use these exact questions. But to get started, it's nice to uh, at least have something to say. So what has God been doing in your life? Um, I learned this one from Pastor Peter. In fact, sometimes nakakainis, every time I see him. So Jim, what's God been teaching you? Or what's God been doing in your life? It's like, Peter, don't you have another question? I mean, can't you, like, how is the weather or something, you know? It, it's like, immediately I'm going to have to, you know, think about what God's doing in my life. And uh, Anyway, but this is a good thing when you sit down together with someone who is seeking you out for maybe counsel about what they should do. And by the way, uh, like I said, the hardest thing about coaching is when someone seeks your counsel, what do you want to do? Am I the only one that's like this? When somebody asks for my advice, what do I want to do? I want to give my advice, right? Isn't that what, I mean, they asked me to give my advice, so isn't that what I should do? Well, that's why I said the hardest skill in coaching is to keep your mouth shut because you don't want to immediately give advice. That won't let them have the opportunity to process. Okay, so you connect. Maybe the first question is, what has God been doing in your life? You can ask any number of questions along those same li lines. If you had met before, what progress did you make on your action steps? Or what insights uh, have you had since our last conversation? So those are follow-up for things that maybe you talked about before. But a good kind of uh, icebreaker is just to ask, what has God been doing in your life? Or what has God been teaching you? Something like that. So that's connect. Okay. Now, the next one is a little weird. <clears throat> because it's almost like this is a very programmed thing to do. And if you don't feel comfortable with it, it's okay. But there's a purpose. There's a reason for doing this. The second step is outcome. So uh, this is asking the one that you are coaching, what would they like to see happen as a result of meeting together? So they probably asked to get together or you sensed that you needed to get together. So you want them to be able to set the agenda. So you might ask a question like, so what result would you like to take away from our conversation? Or what would you, what, what would you like as a result of meeting together? What are you expecting? Or what would make today's conversation meaningful for you? Or what would be most helpful for us to work on? Um, if they haven't told you what the issue is, um, you might ask them something like, well, what is the issue that you would like help in dealing with? So let them begin explaining what the things are that they want to talk about. Okay. Now, again, I'm going through this. It's a very structured approach. And if you were meeting together with a person, you know, you might have your code to go with you and you're looking at the questions and they're probably going, aren't we just having coffee? What are we doing here? Um, so don't do that. Okay? Don't have your code to go with the right questions. You know, it should be a little bit more fluid than that. But at the same time, this is the sequence. So first, you want to just get started, ask what God is doing in their life, and then what could you help them with in the conversation? What is it that would help them? Then the third is awareness. And this is where you're going to spend most of the time. You will actually be asking more questions in this area. So this is where you encourage discovery, insights, and shifts in perspectives. So once they have said, you know, uh, actually the problem is I've got a relationship issue with one of my, um, my batchmates in high school. We were supposed to get together to plan a reunion, but awai kami. 
I don't know what to do. So you can say, okay, well, tell me more about the situation. What happened? What were the things that uh, precipitated the conflict? Um, why do you feel the way that you feel because of this conflict? What are some other factors that may have contributed to this conflict? So at this point, you don't want to just ask one or two questions. You want to ask lots of questions. And you want to probe and look at it from different points of view, help them to get a bigger picture of what the problem is. Because what you really want is for them to gain understanding about the situation so they can really sense from the Lord what would be the right thing to do. So in this case, maybe Galitsila, because of something you and the other party did, and so nag explode ka. So because of that, uh, your relationship has been broken. But maybe coming into the meeting, he didn't feel that it was his fault. He felt that it was the other person's fault. So by asking questions, you might help him to understand actually ikaw ang problema, hindi yung kabila. Okay? So that's what you're trying to do is help them to discover really what's contributing to the problem in the situation. And this one, it's a skill that is developed. It's something that you need to learn to be able to ask the right questions to be able to help them understand. So that's what you are doing. So uh, some questions you might ask, maybe a, a, a first question would be, what are key points in understanding the situation? Can you explain the situation and what are the main issues that are involved? Okay. What other factors are influencing the situation? How could you look at this from a different perspective? What if you put yourself in the position of the other person? How would they look at it? Okay. So what you're trying to do is expand or broaden their understanding of the situation so that they will have greater insight and be able to see, ah, we could look at it from this point of view. Maybe there's another solution that I hadn't thought about. Okay. Now, this is where you spend most of your time is asking those questions. Then, once you have kind of exhausted the situation, you feel that they have understood as much as you could, then you go to the next. And the next is course, as in course of action. So what do you want to do as a result? So capture insights and put them into two or three action steps. Now, don't give them 20 action steps, OK? Uh, so definitely, it needs to be sometimes only one is good enough. Sometimes that's more effective. But never make it more than two or three. Because it becomes burdensome if there's too many. So how could you ask a question about this? So what actions will you take to move forward? So knowing what you know now, after understanding the situation better, what steps do you want to take to be able to solve the issue or to move forward? Or um, you might ask them, if you did this, how would you know that you have succeeded? Okay, because the goal is to be able to fix the problem. So how would you know if it was fixed? And then how confident are you that you can do this? Let them talk about maybe their reservations about this action point. Bakaro, sasabihin nila, ay, hindi ko kaya yan. Kailangan ng tulong. Pwede ka nga nang sumama sa akin. Pagkaro, when we go to talk with a guy. That way you can talk about how to actually uh, fix the thing. So if you give them an action point na hindi magawa, then actually you're not giving them an action point because you know it won't be done. Okay? Then after you get through that, you go to the last one, which is highlights. This is summarizing the conversation. So you ask the coachee to review the conversation. And you might ask them, so what do you want to re remember from today's conversation? Or what awareness do you have now that you didn't before? Or what was most useful to you from our conversation today? Okay, now again, when I read all of these, you're going to go, if I said that to my disciple, he would think that I am, you know, reading from a script. Uh, so please don't do that. But you have to understand the flow of what the conversation should be in order for them to be helped. So what do you really want to do? 
First, you want to break the ice. And then you want to surface what is the issue that they want to deal with. Then you want to discover as much as you can about that situation. So you ask them all kinds of questions. And then you ask them after they have gained greater understanding, so what action steps do you want to take to be able to overcome that issue? And then the last thing is, well, this was a great conversation. Is there anything that really was stood out to you that really helped you from our conversation? You none, okay? So I'm giving you the structured one, but don't worry, you don't have to use it exactly like that, but know what the flow is that you would normally have in this kind of a conversation. Okay, claro ba? Okay, we'll see. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to do a demonstration. So we will demonstrate now, so it's like you're just kind of listening in on our conversation. You might take some notes. Um, don't fall asleep. Don't go online and read Facebook. So please, I don't know, be with us. Hey, Punch. How are you doing? Hey, Pastor Jim. How are you? Oh, good. So uh, how are things since the last time we talked? Um, things are good. It's, it's, um, in terms of uh, personally, I'm okay. But uh, there, there's someone in my D group that's currently having some problems. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So... <clears throat> um, is that what you want us to talk about, is kind of focus on the issues with your D-group member? Yeah, unfortunately, it's, we're talking about a guy, not a, guy, a girl. Yeah. Not a girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we need to talk about something else, Ponchi. Yeah, no. Maybe later, when we have time. <laughs> um, so, well, tell me about the situation with this, uh, this disciple of yours. Well, I've known him for two years. Uh, he's been working in and out of the country. He works abroad. Uh, he's the only, as of now, he's the only believer in the family. He has two siblings, uh, two sisters, uh, one older and one younger. And then um, he, li he lives with them and also their his parents. But the problem is uh, he recently, they found out that his, his father has... Uh, another family and so that causes a lot of challenges and uh, problems in their house especially it affects his uh, younger sister and then they also recently learned that uh, his father is not anymore fit to work so he's gonna be the breadwinner so with all these things happening and they are they don't have really that uh, good relationships with one another and then also with the thought of uh, having another family, so it's really tough for them. I mean, so, for have you had a chance to talk with him much about this, or? Yes, I get to talk to him, but uh, I'm not. There are things that there are times that I don't. I'm not really sure what to say or how I can process it with him. So, that's also my challenge. Have you been to GLC level three about uh, coaching? <laughs> um. I've heard about it. <laughs> so, I mean, how have you approached trying to help him? Well, I just listen. First, I listen to him, and I just hear his stories, and then uh, I try my best to empathize with him and also encourage him because I I can also see uh, God, God, how God is working. Because uh, first of all. He introduced himself to him, uh, to, so he's, he's, the, he's, uh, he's the believer in the family. So that itself is a that's a good uh, uh, that's a good uh, shine of light in the situation. But uh, there, I, but yeah. So how is his relationship with the rest of the family? Uh, he's not that close with his dad, just like. Uh, with his other siblings toward their dad. Uh, we're not too close eh, with one another. Eh. So, so even before they discovered the situation sa dad, di sila masyadong na malapit. Yes, because uh, his dad also uh, worked, ab worked abroad. So there are times, long periods of time that they're not with him. So that's also a factor. In terms of him being a Christian, um, is that having an impact in the relations in the family? 
Well, yes, because uh, he acknowledges that God is sovereign, that God, amidst all the things happening, that like, God loves him and also his family. But there are really times that it's just really tough for him because uh, when ev everything seems to fall apart. And so, and he has that burden yeah, to, to also provide for the family. So that's another challenge because... Actually, he's the only one working in their family now. His youngest sister is still studying. So is his job situation okay to be able to help provide? Or uh, Yes, uh, it's, it can cover, but uh, actually they have, they're, paying, they're like paying a house, which he's not sure if they're going to they're be able to continue the payment. So, so that's... So he's also worried about uh, provision in the future. Yeah. So how is his mom doing through all of this? Um, well, with regard, of course, it's it's not easy for her to know about the... And uh, although occasionally I hear that they also fight. I mean, they're spared, so it's, it's also tough for them. But I... He's been trying to introduce uh, or invite her to attend a Sunday worship or even uh, uh, and then that, uh, probably as a small group where she can hear about Christ. So that's what she's been doing about it. So do you know the family personally? Are you involved at all or you're just meeting together separately with uh, your disciple? I, I just know uh, the, my disciple, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, well, what are some ways that you think that you can encourage him or help him go through this process of, you know, resolving things with the family? And what what do you see your role as being? Well, I, I can only be a good discipler to him. I mean, I can focus on his walk, and making sure that uh, he, amidst all these challenges that he's focused on the Lord and that uh, he's He's uh, continually uh, seeking him in his life, and that uh, he's also being a good son to his parents and also a good brother to his siblings. So, yeah. So, have you been able to like spend extra time with him, or really just in the discipleship group mainly? Uh, there are times when when he he uh, have he wants to talk about things that he cannot openly share with the group so I spent time I, I set time with him on a different day so we can talk about it okay yeah. um, in terms of uh, the bigger picture of what he's doing right now is he thinking about going abroad to study or to work or is that part of his plan or what what's his plan at this point well, actually he's praying if uh, God would want him to to take on, I mean, to apply for a different job, which, which would be somehow get a propo promotion or uh, get a higher pay so that he can cover expenses. But, but that is he, how does that work? I mean, I mean, he's not the head of the family. I mean, his dad is still alive. So what can I advise him in mean, that master? So if you were in his position, what do you think would be the proper thing for him to do? That's a good question. <laughs> um, well, maybe he can talk to his father. I mean, uh, if they can do something together or they can uh, invest on something to, to also help him cover the expenses at their house. It's probably one thing that they can do. And also, that would also help them build some our relationship with one another. Yeah. So, what do you see as some of the, the things that <clears throat> you would want your disciple to be able to address in this situation? What are some of the main things that you want to kind of coach him through? So, that's one, is being able to build a better relationship with the father. Uh, Anupa, what other... I can't think of something right now. What What do you think? Deep <laughs> 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 bro. 
Parang ano, inuutakan. Okay. Um, and against the question. <laughs> so, what are some of the things that you would want to help him with? So, one of them is to help build better relationship with uh, his father. Yeah. What are maybe a couple other things that you would want to really encourage him with? Um, well, like, I believe that his, God placed him there in, the, in his family to be salt and light. So he should be the one to really start uh, being a uh, first model of Christ-likeness. People, uh, his family members should see Christ in him. And, and also how he would respond to, the, to them they, daily uh, amidst all these uh, challenges. So, yeah. so just encourage him to really be Christ-like in the midst of the situation. Yeah. <clears throat> Have you talked with him about how it's possible when difficulties come that actually that can be an open door for being able to minister differently? Um, is that a conversation that you've had with him? Yes, uh, of course, he can uh, minister to his, uh, since his uh, younger sister doesn't have a close relationship with his dad, with her dad. So, of course, there's in every uh, child, they look up to uh, God, uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, my father figure or a uh, man in the look up to a man so he can uh, be the one to to help her and also to uh, if if she has problems maybe they can they can talk about it and then uh you can also uh somehow disciple her in a way that uh introduce Christ and however uh, God intends him to be. That's good. So what I hear you saying is that there's at least a couple of things you want to encourage him. One is to be able to uh, build a better relationship with the Father, maybe to look for ways that they could work together to provide, uh, whether it's investment or something like that. But just yeah. probe about that. Another thing is just encourage him to continue walking with God uh, so that he would be salt and light for the family. But then, especially with the younger sister, kind mm. of take a, a role of being the older brother, Yung Kuya, yeah. to be able to help her. So is that kind of what I hear you saying? Yes, yes. Okay. So what specific things will you do in order to accomplish those three? Well, of course, uh, it's good if I can continually follow up with him, uh, what I, this thing, so that even though it would be challenging for him, he, he knows that I'm just here to just really hear him out and also encourage him. So we, we pray together uh, about it because ultimately uh, it's God who will really uh, patch things up or even uh, make things to align everything uh, according to his desires and purposes for them. Okay. So be there available to him. Uh, kind of be an encourager, yeah. pray for him. Yes. <clears throat> Anything else that you could do? Um, I'll still pray about it, whatever. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good enough. <laughs> okay, so uh, kind of as an action point then, uh, what I hear you saying is that you want to regularly be committed to spend time uh, with him, uh, to encourage him, to pray together for him. Uh, but then there may be other things that along the way you discover that you might be able to do, uh, especially encouraging him with his sister, mm -hmm. uh, encouraging him in the relationship with the father. So those are good things. Actually, given the situation, um, she he doesn't also know how to handle 
whenever her sisters, I mean, she has uh, times that she cries, and then also she wouldn't go home early. So I actually helped him to get counseling uh, with the pastoral care, so that it could it would be handled uh, professionally by someone who knows how to really do biblical counseling. So that's something that was already done. Good. So you have introduced him to the counseling people yeah. from, you know, from pastoral care. Yes. Okay, yeah. you can follow up on that. Yes. Then. Okay, so I hear clearly the action points that you would like to do. Uh, is there anything else from just what we have talked about that maybe um, you realized or there was something important from the conversation that you would like to remember? Anything that stood out to you? Well, well, as much as uh, he is an instrument uh, being used by God to his family, but, and also, but at the same time, I'm also being used by God to, as an instrument uh, to help him in his life. So, yeah, just really being more uh, sensitive and also being more available for him to, to help him also. Eh? In this, uh, so I can be uh, like a real brother to him. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Okay. So we'll uh, pray for you. So let me pray for. What is uh, your disciple's name? Um, the real name? No, I no, can't no, say no, that. No, no, you can't. Make up a name. It's Paul. It's Paul. Paul. Okay. Yeah. If you said Jim, I was going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, Father, we do want to pray for Paul. Uh, we do know that uh, this is a difficult situation for him. Father, uh, it's caused a lot of uh, really chaos within the family. Lord, we thank you for putting Ponchi in his life to be able to encourage him, to be able to walk uh, through this with him, and to be really a kuya to him, a brother in Christ, to encourage him. So, Father, we pray that you would give him wisdom about how to do that, uh, how to encourage him to... Uh, use this opportunity to be a salt and light in this family, to encourage the family to get through it. We pray especially for the, the uh, younger sister as she is struggling with uh, the realization of what's happened in their family. Lord, would you use this as a turning point in her life uh, to bring her to Christ and even the rest of the family, uh, the mother, the other sibling, Father, all of these, even the, the father, Lord, would you use these things to bring them into a relationship with you? And Father, we thank you for Ponchi for his availability to be an older brother, a kuya to him. And Lord, would you bless them as uh, they walk through this together? We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Let's Pastor give Jim. Ponchi a hand. Thank you. So, what did you notice? I didn't answer any of his questions. Uncle <laughs> you know? Um, so I can tell you that's not natural uh, because, like, well, I'm going to two or three questions that I asked him. I already am formulating in my mind. I don't going to do that, but go in. Isn't that what you were doing? In fact, some of you were getting so anxious. When are you going to tell him what to do? You know? um, that is our natural tendency. But the fact that he went through the whole process helped him to understand a little bit more about what his role is supposed to be. So when we started, he was thinking just about his disciple, right? So what should he tell the disciple? And then by the end, he realized that actually God had put him there for a purpose. So the perspective changed, okay? So I'm, I hope it really changed, right? <laughs> I'm hoping. But you see the process itself help him to, to understand more about what should be done. Okay? Isn't that a nice thing? Where it wasn't me telling him, but God was allowing him to process it on his own. Okay? So right now, what I want you to do is I want you to pair up with another person, uh, preferably a person of the same gender, um, because it really works better that way. You can open up about things. And what I want you to do is I want you to go through the same process that I just went through with Ponchi. And uh, 
when you go through it, as much as possible, make it a real situation. Okay, so imagine a situation that you would like to maybe get counsel about. Uh, use that as the illustration. Okay, the person with the longest hair will be the coach. Okay? The person with the shortest hair will be the one that will be coached. But walang buhok, alam mo naman yung ano, yung role mo. Okay? So the one with the longest hair, ikaw ang ano coach. Yung ano yung with uh, short or no hair, uh, you are the one being coached. So I want you to start by just connecting. Use the questions that we have here. What has God been doing in your life? Especially when you get to the awareness part, when you get to the awareness part, ask many questions. You want to probe. You want to know more. Help them to look at it from different perspectives. So we'll take about 15 minutes. So go ahead and get started now. Okay, so you have gone through one cycle. Now switch roles. We want the other person to become the coach and the one that was being coached to now be the coach and the one being, that was the coach become the coachee. So think of a situation and use that as the situation that you will share. Did it help you even being coached? You know, every time that we do this, it's supposed to just be a practice. But the reality is, it really helps you to process what you need to do. And uh, so you can see that even if it's not uh, something that you uh, expect it to happen, but it's amazing how God uses the process. So can you see how this can be used in your own ministry? Okay, so we want to kind of make sure that you have some action points. So uh, I want you just within your, uh, your groups, so not just two by two, but you can group together with uh, several if you want to. So how do you see this being used in your own discipleship ministry? In what specific ways could you use coaching as a skill in helping your disciples to grow in discipleship? So just discuss very briefly how you could use this in your discipleship group. Maybe you can share some situation within your discipleship group that you think you could really use this skill to help. Okay, now by way of action point, you will see in your notes uh, that you should ask, who do I need to coach? What area does this person need coaching in? What will be the key questions I ask? And when will I coach him or her? And where will be the best place to meet for him or her for coaching? So just think of at least one person that you would like to practice this with and write down your application in your notes. So do you have a person that you're thinking about uh, coaching? Okay, so we want you to make this a practical application before next week, if you can even practice this uh, and come back and share with us how it went, okay? We have a couple of people that are ready to ask questions, so. Um, good evening, Pastor Jim. Um, I just like to ask the question: Is coaching similar to counseling? And uh, another one, sorry, <laughs> gusto ko po sulitin. <laughs> um, and what do you do if you have someone you're actually having a conversation with, maybe your disciple, and then she answers with, like you ask a question, and then she answers with, "Ewang ko po, hindi ko po alam." <laughs> how do you, 
How do you answer that? <laughs> okay. So the first question is, what's the difference between coaching and counseling? Okay, counseling is usually a little bit more directive. Uh, especially you will turn to scripture that's related. You try to give them answers to help them work through whatever the issue is. Coaching is non-directive. So in other words, you're just asking questions to help them. Uh, interestingly, many times the problems that you do coaching with can also be problems that normally are thought of as a counseling issue. So um, both of them can be used in the same type of problem. Um, for me, uh, I'm not a, like, a professional counselor. Uh, I probably would not do a good job of counseling people for deep emotional issues. But if I can help them process it themselves, then actually I am helping them. So there is a relationship between the two. The approaches are a little bit different. I think Diana will be teaching on counseling. You'll get a different perspective from her about how to do that. But I think the skills of coaching can also be used in counseling. Uh, the other question was, what if you ask questions and you're going to use a goat? I won't go. You need to find ways to keep asking questions creatively. Um, because usually it takes time for people to process. And let me t tell you this. Um, if you are a very fast processor, you ask the question, you want immediate answer. And I think we are uncomfortable when we have to wait, right? So it's like if they don't answer, it's like you want to fill the air time. Is he dead air time? You want, you want to say something. Sometimes people take time to process. Okay, lang yan. Give them time to process. Because especially if it's an issue that they really are struggling with, sometimes they really don't know. And you have to be able to give them time and space, but also keep asking questions a different way. Come at it from a different point of view. So that would be my suggestion. Uh, ano pa? Any other questions that you have? Question ko lang po, um, will it make any difference if you are doing the coaching instead of face-to-face uh, -face than texting or Skype or, you know, call? Yeah. So since I am with Beyond, and we really like Skype ship, so, syempre, yung meron yung sagot ko, okay naman yung ano yung Skype. Um, uh, for me, I think it depends on the person. Uh, for young mga na medyo more mature, like myself, uh, we're not as, uh, maybe, it's not as easy for us, perhaps, to use media like that to be able to open up. So some people, they don't uh, feel that they can open up over Skype or FaceTime or something like that. Um, but in my experience also, younger people don't have a problem with that. So... I think media really doesn't make any difference. Um, texting and doing it uh, via text may be a little bit more difficult. But it's very interesting that we have found in Skypeleship, you know, many people think that, oh, because the face-to-face, the reality is sometimes people will open up more uh, online than they will face-to-face. It's a really unusual thing, but we have seen that, that people can be even more transparent online. So, you know, for me, I don't think the medium is really the issue. It's the relationship. Can they, do they feel that they can open up with you? So, uh-oh. Okay.